Hey YouTube, this is Chris McKee with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you follow us on Instagram, you may have seen recently that we were awarded a top 10 independent tailor dealer in the country. If you're not following us on Instagram, shame on you, we got some cool stuff, so check us out on Instagram. But in honor of us winning that top 10 award, we have for you a special treat. This is top 10 tailor guitar trivia that you may not know. Number 10. Taylor Guitars currently and has always used a bolt-on neck design. When Bob Taylor began building guitars, he felt that the standard dovetail glued-in neck joint was unnecessary, and he chose to bolt on the necks instead, something that was at the time deemed sacrilegious but has now become very commonplace. In the late 1990s, Taylor introduced a new patented neck design called the NT Neck, which stands for New Tech Neck. It is an easily removable neck that utilizes pockets in the neck block and under the fretboard, along with laser cut shims to ensure the proper neck angle at both production and throughout the life of the guitar. Number nine. Early in the history of the company, Kurt Listug drove across the country looking for new dealers and selling Taylor guitars out of the back of his Volvo. You might say it was Taylor's first road show. Number eight. Taylor Guitars has ties to other guitar companies. Greg Deering of Deering Banjo fame actually worked early on at the company before it was Taylor Guitars and after it became Taylor Guitars, as did brothers Larry and Kim Breedlove of Breedlove Guitars. Number seven. Bob Taylor met his business partner and co-founder Kurt Listug when they were both working at a small guitar company called The American Dream. When owner Sam Ratting decided to sell the company, they purchased it, and thus began Taylor Guitars. Number six. Bob Taylor's designs have always been unique. Part of this is because he was completely unaware of Martin Guitars when he began building guitars. His blissful ignorance allowed him to design and develop his guitars without the typical adherence to accepted norms and traditions. Number five. Since inception, Taylor guitars have been known for fantastic playability with a thin and comfortable neck profile. When they started, most acoustic guitars featured a much thicker neck with higher string action. And some even argued that the thin Taylor neck wouldn't last and it would bow or warp. Instead, they've become known for their playability and early on found an audience with many electric guitar players that had abandoned the acoustic guitar because they were difficult to play. Number four, the cases that come with the Taylor guitar are some of the finest cases in the industry. And Taylor is unique from many other builders in that they build the cases themselves. This allows for exact fit for their unique body shapes. But they initially began building these cases out of necessity. Back in the 70s and early 80s, it was not a good era for acoustic guitars and case manufacturers began to go out of business. This made it difficult to find a consistent source for cases that would meet their needs and have similar specs. So in response to this, Taylor learned how to build their own cases and the cases we know and love were born. Number three, the first guitar that Bob Taylor ever made, he built while he was in high school. The guitar is no longer with us. Bob ran over it with his motorcycle. A decision he now regrets, but hey, he was 17. We were all 17. We all did stupid stuff. Number two. Bob Taylor's brought in Andy Powers as an eventual successor, and Andy has already made his mark, first improving the 800 and 600 series, and most recently introducing the new V-bracing design. Andy Powers actually fit a very long list of needs and desired qualities that Bob Taylor had written in a sort of, dear God, this is the type of person I need letter. The list would have been impossible to fill except by one person, Andy Powers. You might call him an answer to prayer. Numero uno. Bob Taylor has now turned his attention to conservation efforts, striving to ensure that responsible forestry practices are utilized and that exotic woods are available for future generations to enjoy in their guitars. Part of this effort can be seen in the ebony mill that Taylor co-manages in Cameroon called Krelikan. 
a video diary of some of Bob Taylor's visits to locales around the world and a look into these conservation efforts can be seen in a recent series of videos the company has released on YouTube. We have bonus for you. We didn't stop at 10. No, this thing goes to 11. So check this out. Taylor has made some very unique guitars over the years inspired by the wood that they were made of. In 1997, Taylor released two limited edition Cujo guitars, as in Cujo, the rabid killer dog from the Stephen King novel and movie. The guitars were available in a limited number as a grand auditorium or dreadnought design and featured beautiful flamed walnut back and sides that had come from the large walnut tree that was prominently featured in the movie. To mark the providence of the walnut, Cujo inlays adorned the headstock and fretboard of these guitars. Another unique tree-inspired guitar released in 2002 is the Liberty Tree Guitar. Built with tulip poplar on the back and sides from the last surviving Liberty Tree of the American Revolution and adorned with inlays on the headstock, fretboard, and top of the Declaration of Independence and pre- and post-Revolutionary War flags. Taylor Guitars produced an award-winning documentary about the history of the tree and the development of the guitar. Finally, Taylor made a very unique guitar that was special for having wood that wasn't special at all. In 1995, Bob Taylor created the infamous Pallet Guitar. The guitar was an exercise in design made to prove the point that how a guitar is designed and the quality of the construction was more important than the type of wood it was made of. The guitar was made out of an oak pallet for the back and sides and some 2x4 of some type of wood for the top. The nail holes were filled with aluminum to simulate the head of the nail and Larry Breedlove designed a forklift inlay for the fretboard. I've played the original guitar at the Taylor factory and it plays and sounds great, proving Bob's point. So I hope you enjoyed our Taylor trivia. If you are in the market for Taylor, have any questions, go to our website, alamomusic.com, because we're a top 10 Taylor dealer. Yeah, we will help you find the perfect guitar to suit your needs. Uh, come in, visit us, call today. We want to help you find the perfect guitar. So until next time, thanks for watching.